We're going to start this lesson off by just adding fractions by getting a common denominator. Now, there's a catch to this, and we're going to make sure that we show our factors when we're doing this. So when I'm going to add these fractions together, I need a common denominator. To get a common denominator, I need to introduce a factor of 5 here and here. And I need to introduce a factor of 2 here and here. And that gives us a common denominator of 10. And then now we can add them together. And I'm just going to keep this in factored form. So I'm going to write this as 5 over 2 times 5 plus 2 over 2 times 5. And that's going to give us 7 over 2 times 5. Now, it seems strange I'm leaving the denominator factor like this, but it's the factors that we're going to be interested in later on. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to get a common denominator of 12 by multiplying the bottom by 4, top by 4, bottom by 3, top by 3. This gives me 8 over the common denominator of 3 times 4 plus 3 over the common denominator of 3 times 4. And that's going to give me two groups of 4 plus one group of 3. And that's going to be 11 over the common denominator of 3 times 4. Okay, so we can see that, that the 11 can be comes from some groups of 4 and some groups of 3, and that has something to do with the denominator. That's something I, that's important to kind of note, because what we're going to end up doing is we're not adding fractions. We're going to unadd fraction or decompose fractions. Okay, so if I have, if I start with the answer 7 over 12, we're curious to know what fractions it came from to get that 7 over 12. And to do that, we're going to break the denominator into its factors, 3 and 4. And we're just going to make the assumption that some fraction over 3 plus some fraction over 4 is going to give us 7 over 12. Now, what the numerators are are unknown, but we do know that if I multiply the numerator, the top and bottom by 4, for a over 3, I'm going to end up with 4a. So I'm just going to make a note here that this 4 and this a is going to give me this 4a. This 3 and this b is going to give me the 3b here. And we know that that's going to give us the numerator which is the 7 here. So it's going to be equal to that numerator of 7. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what A and B is. Now, in this case here, we can kind of guess. Uh, well, A must have been, so it's some groups of 4 and some groups of 3 that gives us a whole number of 7. And we can guess to be this to be A is going to be equal to 1. So it's going to be 1 over 3 and b is equal to 1, so it's going to be 1 over 4, and that's going to give add together to make 7 over 12. Okay? So there's two unknowns, a and b, so we kind of do have to be a bit of guessing because we only really have one relationship to be able to work out. So 4a plus 3b equals 7 is our one relationship. So we'll do the same thing here. We're going to take the denominator of 3, and that's going to be multiplying by b. The denominator of 5 is going to multiply to equal a5. So that's going to be, when I write that out, I'm going to end up with 5a plus 3b. And that's going to be equal to 13. And that's from, well, we know that those the numerator must add up to 13. And again, we can kind of guess at this, and we know some groups of 
5 plus some groups of 3 is going to add up to 13. So I know that A is going to be well, two groups of 5. So I'm going to make my A 2 and my B 1. So that's going to be 10 plus 3, which is our 13. And when I do the work this out, 2 times 5 plus 3 times 1 is going to give me the 13 numerator over the common denominator of 15. Okay, so this is interesting. We can decompose the original fraction into its component parts by looking at the factors of the denominator. And we can do some crisscross multiplication here to kind of guess at what those original numerators and denominators were, the A and B terms. Okay, so we're going to do something now with rational expressions. So we're moving on from numbers to expressions, and we're going to end up decomposing some expressions as well. So we're going to end up here. I'm going to take my 1nx plus 5. So I'm going to end up with 1 times x plus 5 plus, I'm going to take my denominator here of x plus 2, and that's going to go with that one. So we're going to end up with 1 times x plus 2. And that's going to give me the numerator of the fraction with a common denominator of x plus 2, x plus 5. Okay, so some group of x plus 5 and some group of x plus 2 is going to give me the answer. In this case, one group of each. And that's going to give me 2x's plus 5 plus 7 is 7. So 5 plus 2 is 7. And that's all over my common denominator of x plus 2, x plus 5. Again, I want you to kind of just make note of that we are taking groups of the denominator x plus 5 and groups of the denominator x plus 2. So similar things going to happen here. So we're going to again have my x minus 4. But now instead of one group, we're going to use two groups here, unlike the previous example. So we end up with two groups of x minus 4. And then this time I'm going to subtract and I'm going to move on to one group of x plus so Now we have different number of groups for the different, for the denominator parts. So one group of the denominator of x plus 3. We're subtracting in this case. So it's going to be negative one group. And that's all going to be over my common denominator of those factors x minus 4, x plus 3. Okay, so then combining my like terms, 2x minus 1x is 1x, negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So that 1x and negative 11 is a combination of some groups of some groups of x minus 4s and some groups of x plus 3s. Okay, and that is the denominator x minus 4, x plus 3. So those factors in the denominator have something to do with the way we generate the numerator. Okay, so that's important for us to recognize. 